Rolling Stones. He had chart-topping hits like I'm Henry VIII, I am. Mrs. Brown, you've got a lovely daughter. And something tells me I'm into something good. It's one of the most feel-good songs of all time. We only dance for a minute or two And then she's stuck close to me The whole night through Thursday night, see Peter Noon and Herman's Hermits perform at Showwear Center. It's a British Invasion night. With them will be the stellar Beatles tribute band 1964. For tickets, go to www.1964tickets.com or call 1-800-838-3006. It's important to note, uh, the promoter of this is a really nice guy, and a portion of the proceeds benefits Music Aid Northwest, local food banks, and World Vision in support of our World Vision humanitarian efforts. Bring the whole family, help out the world, and get into something good. The show is so good that even Santa will take a break during his busiest season to be there. Word has it. Peter Noon, welcome back to the Bob Rivers Show. Hey, Peter. Hey, Bob, how are you doing? Hey, hey, Spike, how are you? Good morning, Peter. Doing great, thanks. How y'all doing? Good. And we've got, we've got uh, Joe and Jody and Eric and uh, Pedro and... Uh, and little Timmy, oh too. Happy Christmas. You've got everybody there. Yeah. What a lovely thing. God. What a lovely idea on the morning like that. Right. So that person, who was that person doing Dean Martin before? That is a guy named Scott Burns, a radio gentleman in Seattle who does a beautiful... You saw You heard that, huh? Yeah, I was listening to your show. I'm a weirdo. I like music. Thank you. Well, you know that in, in Seattle and Washington and in Colorado, there's a lot of people getting fired up about firing one up. Uh, legally for the yeah, first time. Yeah, I saw that. Isn't that isn't that so weird? It must be like like the end of prohibition must have been like that. I I, I just think it's so strange everybody's like on the television. Every time I watch the television you see people like smoking bongs and things around there. <laughs> well, we all do it. We are required to uh, I uh, hadn't smoked it. I, you don't smoke that stuff, do you, Peter? No, I never got into that. You know, I what happened was when it started, there was like there were two groups of people, and girls didn't join join in with that. So when when all the guys went in the room to smoke dope, I would steal their girlfriends. That was my. <laughs> That's a good deal. <laughs> Those two groups of people were the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. <laughs> Those are the other two. That's yeah, the they had good girl. They had good birds hanging around. You know yeah. what I mean? Where's Brian? Oh, he's in the other room with the lads. Well, would you like to go out on my bike? <laughs> now, Peter, even though I'm sure that was true. At age, <laughs> yeah, at age 21, you married the love of your life, and you're still with her to this day, correct? Exactly right. Yeah, what happened was I, I found the nicest, best-looking girl ever, and I got married to her, and she's still nice. How do you I say her name? Is it Muriel? Mireille. Mireille. It's French. Yeah, and it was good because I'd done French at school, and I knew how to say, uh, I've got my uncle's pen. You know, j'ai la plume de mon oncle. Uh-huh. Very well, so that was impressive to her. She goes, oh, you know, I say I can start. So I, she was impressed that I could speak a bit of French. That's and neat. none of the other guys, it was in the bag of nails. We, went, we both went to see Jimi Hendrix at a concert. She from France and me from Manchester. And I was this guy who walked up to her and said, um, can you dance in French? Wow. And Now, wait a minute. Yeah. So you're 21. Now, when you had your hits younger, you were already a big star, right? Well, I had my first hit when I was 16, that I'm into something good. Perhaps you can tell by the key that it was pre-pubescent. Right? <laughs> yes. Do you sing it in a different key today? No, I still do it in the same one. You know, I managed to, um, I managed to work hard. I, got this, I found this lady in New York in the 80s who taught me how to sing like that again. So you, so wait it, a minute, you, you, that was a prepubescent song, I'm into something good, in that, in that range, and then you, when you grew up and you, your voice changed, which a little bit, you then took special vocal lessons so you could authentically be prepubescent again. No, so I could authentically walk on stage and be Herman. And be you Herman, know, I go yeah. on stage and I'm 17 again, you know, I you have are. to pretend that I'm 17 again, and it works. But By the way, the morning, I, it, I've seen you do that. It hurts. I've seen you do that, Peter, and Herman is like your alter ego. It's like Hannah Montana to uh, Miley, sort of. Uh, but, I mean, it, it, it's uh, you are, uh, when you're on stage, you portray such joy and happiness. It does feel Aww. like you're a kid again. You know, that's, 
You know, it, it, it sort of works. So, some of that old Stanislavski method where you actually get inside the person. I'm mm. lucky because I like the 17-year-old person. So, and, and, you know, he has loads of energy. So you use lots of adrenaline and, and it's kind of like a speed show. Mm. And then, like I said, it really hurts in the morning. But for, for an hour and a half, I'm... Uh, He's 17. And it's good for me. It's good for me. I look forward to that. Peter Noon. Peter, you've had you've had a well-adjusted life for an uh, for a rock icon child star with many many hits, haven't you? You married your your sweetheart at 21. You have a yeah. you have a daughter who's also a musician. We're going to get to that. But did you did you have any rocky times at all? You didn't have any. You didn't fall into any of the show business. Uh, you know, traps. I, I probably I probably did, but you know, I've always been grateful for what I've got. I'm a lucky sort of person. You know, it, like at school, I was lucky. I already knew the work when when I was asked a question. You know, that kind of thing. I I think maybe I was overeducated for my position, but. You know, compared to the other people in the bands, and right from the beginning, you know, I, I my head was put on my shoulders pretty firmly by by John Lennon and people like that. You know, if you if you went in a bar from with John Lennon, you were invisible. Wow! And that was a good feeling, you know. And I go, oh, the, it's it's possible to be invisible. You can be a rock star and everything, but you can actually be visible. And the whole hermit thing always worked me because I am kind of reclusive. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's lots of worse places to be than on your own. And, you know, I like books and I like girls, you know, so so they're, they're accessible. You know, it's not, none of it's illegal. So. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Those are healthy, wonderful pastimes. Uh, now, you and your, you and your wife, Mireille, Mireille live Mireille. In, uh, in beautiful Santa Barbara, and yet uh, the fantasy for a young British rock star would be to grow up and have, like, a big castle in England or something why did you well, we locate? Did first. You did. You did we that. We did. When we first got married, we had a big castle. In Been there, done that, sold the castle. We, you know, every time we moved, we we, we kind of we, every time we moved, we got a smaller house, and the and then once when when Natalie was born, twenty five years ago, we bought a, a a house with another room, and I think that's because we didn't want my parents to visit. We kept getting smaller houses <laughs> and your parents I would see. visit and tell me what to do because my parents, until the very end, were still telling me to stand up straight and stuff like that. You know? wow. Now, do you still, so you live in a really small house in Santa Barbara, not a big ranch? Well, a small one compared to everybody else. I mean, I can see one of Oprah Winfrey's trees and she's got lots of them. She's got lots of trees and lots of, yeah, because there's some really, I mean, I think Santa Barbara, I think, you know, you own your own winery or something. Well, we're just not that, those types, you know, we're quiet people. I, I go to work and I become Herman, and when I'm here, I'm sort of like, uh, I don't know what I'm like, I'm sort of like a normal person. I've right. always been kind of normal, and that's what was always right. what made me lucky. You know, I didn't, I, you know, I did, I did American Idol, and the producers told me that when I came to the show, I had to go on the red carpet, and I go, oh, I, I don't do that. And they said, well, what you, well you've got to. So I said, well, well what do you do? And they were in shock that I'd never been on a red carpet mm. because I did like the Beatles sneak in the back way, you know the Be- because they taught me. You know, I'd watch the way they did things. I didn't know anybody else who was famous, mm. so the Beatles were not kind of red carpet people. They had they were so famous and popular that they snuck in the back way and missed all that sort of brouhaha. And you did and, that. And I, you didn't need to be famous. Like his fame, it doesn't sound like fame is that important to you. Just being great at what you do is important to you. Well, what, what was important to me was to hear my music. The, the, the moment, the defining moment for me when I said, OK, now you've made it, was I was in, an, in a club in Bolton and I was in the kitchen upstairs getting changed for a show. And I heard Herman's Hermit time to something good on the record, on the radio. And I said, well, there you go. Now I'm with Elvis Presley and the Beatles in right. that other thing. And, you know. Somebody said it's like it could be a one-hit wonder, some disc jockey, because maybe Herman Summits is a one-hit wonder. And I said, well, at least with one hit, I'm in a better position than the billion people who've just made records and everything. have no hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.